Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Sunday night, uh, end of the weekend. Got Monday rolling around tomorrow. June 11th, 2023. It's about 10.19 p.m. here along the West Coast. Latest quake shows a 1.4 out here along the West Coast. It's going to be the uh, latest quake here on the map, looks like, right? Uh, well, that's a 1.2 coming in. Looks like about an hour or so ago. 1.4 looks to be in the mix here of earthquake activity right around the Cobb Mountain region of Northern California. Uh, quite a bit of hydrothermal operations uh, ongoing there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Pacific Northwest looks relatively quiet. A little bit of movement across Lake Almanor this morning. Uh, some activity kicking up here down in Southern California. Nothing major. Uh, in fact, the 2.5 map and above goes blank once we switch that over. So all microquake activity. No major swarms kicking up. Uh, just generally uh, light activity across the San Jacinto fault zone and portions of the Los Angeles jungle. All right, uh, Oklahoma. Let's see if we got anything uh, further popping up here. Looks like we did have a little activity earlier this evening. Most of this movement, though, from uh, earlier today, this morning around the um, Union City area of Oklahoma. The rest of the country here fairly quiet. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map here tonight and see what's cooking. 109 epicenters of trimmer, a little bit down south and a little bit up north. Not a big number whatsoever, just a slight trimmer count here along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, switching over here to the southeast or southwest, excuse me, 4.3. From earlier this afternoon, it looks like, prior to noon, pretty deep 4.3. See if we got any adjustment going on down here. Um, most of the activity, obviously, is well confined here across the Indonesia region and the Java Trench with movement up around Japan area getting uh, somewhat elevated as well. New Zealand, I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity down here. Timothy was chatting about... Uh, Feeling some shaking going on here recently down into New Zealand. Uh, let's see what we got here for any activity that uh, may, be, uh, may be missed here. Let's see here, 2.7. That looks like about two hours or so ago. Most of this activity here from yesterday. Uh, a good way to see if there's any earthquakes, if they're happening and they're not being reported, is to investigate the earthquake drums, the seismograph drums here. And um, let's see here. I'm not really seeing too much activity. A couple smaller microquakes down here, South Island. Uh, Wellington area looks pretty quiet. Not for sure, though, what the Oxford station is here. Um, that activity, I can't say if it's, it doesn't look like it's legit activity. And the reason why I say that is because. A lot of these signals, you kind of have to zoom in here. Let me boost this up a little bit. You can see how these seismograph stations here pick up this weird signal. It starts off small and then it gets elevated and then it just drops off. Uh, a lot of those show that type of uh, signal right there again. Um, and I don't think it's, this doesn't look like any type of earthquake activity or volcanic activity. Uh, to me, it looks like some type of, um, potential interference nearby now if you look at you know say for example if this was real activity or if this was like earthquake activity happening we would obviously see it even if it's small show up here on local stations and i just don't see it here around the mcqueen's valley area um, and they're very close here the oxford area of mcqueen's valley seismograph stations here look uh, awfully close together and that signal not showing up here so i believe this is some type of outside interference but uh, as far as the movement you're feeling there timothy i'm not for sure and i'm not really seeing it uh, kick up across the seismograph stations here uh, for the most part earthquake activity is non-existent here across new zealand one little spike of an earthquake here it looks like um, uh, down here south island area but that's very small All right, so we'll move on, uh, but still, I do think New Zealand needs to be on guard because it is in the mix of the uh, X marks the spot, so to speak, in terms of the quiet seismic zone uh, in between very active regions here recently. Uh, around Papua New Guinea area and up 
into Indonesia. 4.6, it looks like the latest quake in this area. Uh, let's see what we got here across the globe once again. Uh, getting a little bit of newer activity up into the Izu Trench, 5.0. See this earthquake up here, north of the Mariana Islands area. This is around the Volcano Islands, Japan region, about 10 kilometers deep for that 5.0 coming in just earlier this evening. I uh, have been seeing a little bit of elevated movement here across the western Pacific Plate. And uh, obviously up here across the northwestern edge where we did see that uh, somewhat larger earthquake hit the Japan area well north of Tokyo. I'm not for sure what the population density is up here, but either way it was somewhat deep. 123 kilometers here into the Japan Trench. Uh, which limits the amount of damage and the felt uh, activity, keeps it to a minimum. Kurokamachaka Trench, not a whole lot going on there. We did have some uh, earthquake activity there yesterday, late yesterday. It looks like this globe is a little bit past that 24-hour map. There we go, 24-hour threshold. As uh, far as the Alaska region goes, there's that 5.0 into northern Alaska. We haven't really seen too much activity kicking up here since that earthquake uh, that kicked off this morning. Most of the activity here confined to the typical regions here along the Aleutian Trench and the Cook Inlet area. Mostly smaller microquakes. Uh, down here on the Big Island, very minimal activity. Things continuing as is there at Kilauea Volcano, but lack of earthquake activity tells me that uh, uh, this is just flowing freely from the surface as far as the magma goes, reaching the surface, uh, and then it becomes lava. Five earthquakes, that's about it. Over the last 24 hours there across the Big Island. Uh, South America region, that was kind of a, a zigzag pattern there. Chile area looks like uh, one earthquake from earlier this afternoon, 4.6, 106 kilometers deep. Now, looking at the earthquake 3D globe here, it does show a little bit of smaller activity in the three range across the South America region, with most of the activity here centered around the portion of the Middle America Trench with some fours and threes kicking off uh, further up here. And USGS not reporting on this activity, but it's there. Looks like it may be off uh, the coast of the Guatemala area, El Salvador region. Atlantic Ocean, not a whole lot. Mediterranean area, very minimal for the most part. Some twos and threes across this area. So just a little uh, a little bit of everything here and there for the most part, folks. But still, keep an eye. New Zealand area. Uh, and now with some potential further movement up here across Japan. Um, these deeper quakes, they do tend to trigger stress upstream. It's actually somewhat of a larger quake uh, downstream for that uh, area. Uh, so we'll watch uh, this Japan Trench and the Kurokamachaka Trench for some further movement. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, key that up. We haven't checked it in a little while and doesn't look like there's too much activity. If you guys notice though, that signal, that graph, or this uh, signature I should say on the graph is the 6.2 in Japan earlier this morning. Notice that signature showed up very nicely across all the seismograph stations that are functioning properly. And as far as earthquake activity goes, Yellowstone is awfully, awfully quiet. Space weather activity dropping down in the current solar flare threat level. 99% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare 20, X flare around 5% chance. Uh, still have a few sunspots out there that we're kind of watching. Uh, and also a beautiful, absolutely beautiful filament uh, that was posted here on the solarham.net site earlier. Check out this image here. Let me see if I can zoom this in. Look at this plasma just lifting off the surface of the, uh, I don't know about the surface here, but the uh, uh, the area of the sun here in the northern section. Absolutely stunning. Um, and that can create some severe storms if that was, uh, not severe thunderstorms, but severe space weather activity if that was earth directed. Been a little while since we've had that type of event Earth directed, but they do happen. That will be uh, obviously not in our direction. It will not be geo effective, that is. 
Uh, as far as the three day goes, looks fairly green, meaning no green up in the sky, unfortunately. Aurora forecast, very, very minimal to say the least. Looking at uh, the sunspots here from the UV filter ray. Gives you a, a pretty good glimpse here of the solar flares here and uh, some pretty awesome detail. Magnetic structure and magnetic lines. Uh, also the magnetogram image here is the general one I like to use in terms of figuring out their complex structure. See if they, uh, I don't know why it does that. That's really weird. Been doing that lately. Just bouncing back and forth here. Um, but yeah, you're able to see the, uh, the complex structure that these may harbor. And right now it doesn't look like any of these pose any major threat for any type of flaring. Uh, sea flare at best, I think. Uh, and that's probably going to come from this regional sunspot. And that's, um, that's looking pretty sad as far as the uh, flare potential goes. Doesn't look like there's too much off on the eastern limb either. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to change, right? We are entering into solar maximum here. We're going to peak out in 2025, summertime, uh, and then drop back down. We're already still ahead of schedule, ahead of predicted sun, uh, sunspot number progression here. This was the predicted uh, area. We're still ahead of that. And also the predicted SFI, the solar flux energy, so to speak, index. Um, we're still ahead of that uh, as well, as far as the prediction goes. But we're in a little quiet period for now. Hopefully that will pick back up. Looks like January is, January is one of our more active months earlier this year. Uh, February was pretty active as well, but it looks like we're just dropping down a little bit. We'll continue to watch this. Uh, and of course, things are just taking a little pause right now, I believe. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, seen some uh, activity rocking Texas over there earlier. Getting a whole bunch of rainfall out around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, looking at the long range models here, uh, once again, I kind of like to look at these and see if, uh, well, see if we got any major changes coming up as far as the weather patterns go. Just had a few sprinkles here outside of Chico, California. Uh, hit hit about 89 degrees today here. It's It's been a cool summer for us so far because of these trough systems here, these uh, low pressures that have been uh, popping up thunderstorms around the area, bringing some light showers with it. Um, let's see what we got as we head into uh, a little bit deeper into June. Now I know it's going to get a little hotter out here come up uh, this coming week. Notice this ridging kicking off here off the Pacific Northwest. That's, uh, we're getting a slight uh, influx from that high pressure system. Um, and it looks like it's not going to last long though. Um, I'm not seeing any dominant, dominant ridging taking place out here along the West Coast, which is good news. Those uh, dominant ridges, those patterns can create super hot temperatures out here along the West Coast. And for now, uh, towards the end of June, it looks like uh, for the most part, we'll be in a little bit of a trough pattern out here with high pressure. Uh, notice this bulge right here. That's, that's a little warm. That's going to bring a lot of heat coming in here. Of course, thunderstorms as well. Maybe a monsoonal pattern. We'll have to see. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be uh, pleasant out here along the west coast, I believe. As far as the total accumulated precipitation out here, this goes until about June 27th. Uh, looks pretty wet. It looks like the east coast is going to get in on some much needed rainfall out here. and Also, the areas around those fires that just popped up out of the blue here a few days ago, a week or so ago. Um, looks like some regions may be upwards around four to five inches. Uh, these guys definitely need it. Little breakout here in the southern plains, it looks like. Uh, California, maybe a sprinkle here or there. Most of the moisture stays up in the mountains during the uh, summertime, but occasionally we get a few sprinkles down here in the valley. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, at least one weather model showing the um, possibility of some further wet weather out there along the east coast, which is good news. Uh, let's see, remember that hurricane that's supposed to show up here on the 22nd in the Gulf? Well, let's check out the most recent GFS model here as we zoom in. And uh, I think I just seen it get sucked up into the uh, low pressure pattern here 
Here's the 22nd. Uh, and I remember we were looking here last night or the night before, showing a hurricane forming out here south and into the Gulf hitting Texas. But as you can see, um, it looks like what would be some of it down here uh, is getting lofted up and lifted into the low pressure system that's spinning along the east coast. You guys see that? Just rip that hurricane right apart. Um, and that uh, prevented that potential uh, for coming into the Gulf there. there. There it goes. See that? Just zoop right up into that low pressure. Uh, and again, this is ways out, but it just goes to show you how quick these weather patterns can change uh, from day to day. Uh, who knows? Tomorrow we may look at this and it might show it back in the Gulf. Who knows? But uh, we'll continue to check that as we get closer uh, into the end of June. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. Enjoy your rest of the weekend, what's left of it. Monday, tomorrow, unfortunately, I know it's, it's a Monday, right? But got to remember, Friday's just down the road once again. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later uh, tomorrow sometime. Take care and have a beautiful night. Peace out.